I'd like to paint a quick scenario for you. Let's say I have a sturdy wooden board about 12 feet long and about a foot wide. And let's say I put it on the sidewalk. And then I ask you to walk on top of this board from one end to the other without letting your feet touch the sidewalk. I'm sure most of you would be able to do it really easily. Now, let's say I take the same sturdy wooden board and I raise it up 30 stories high and I place it between two buildings that are next to each other. <laughs> and now I ask you to walk from one end to the other. Do you think the same amount of you would be able to walk from one end to the other? <laughs> Probably not. Now we've put a different factor into the equation which changes everything. Pressure. Pressure changes everything. Now, if you fail, your life is over. <laughs> I'd like to share with you two really short stories today about pressure and how we humans handle pressure. The first story is actually a personal one about failure. Here I was in fifth grade, first week, and the teacher had broken up the classroom into groups to solve a problem. She, we were then supposed to present the solution to that problem in front of the whole class. And of course, as luck would have it, against my will, I was chosen as a representative for my group to present in front of the class. And I was panicking. I had never presented in front of a class. And the little girl that I had a crush on at that point was sitting there 15 feet away from me, just staring at me, waiting to see how I would do. <laughs> for a 10-year-old boy, what your crush thinks of you is the most important thing in the world at that point. I'm sure many of you will remember. So as I'm walking up to the front of the classroom, my heart is racing, it's ready to jump out of my chest, and I start sweating profusely. I get to the front of the class, then all of a sudden, the lights seem to get dimmer. But there's no dimmers in the room. This is the Dominican Republic, we don't have that technology just yet. <laughs> and sounds seem to get farther and farther away. And as I'm about to say my first word, I faint. Complete and utter failure. I let my team down. Someone else had to actually come and present for me. And of course, little Susie was very, very disappointed and thought I was a loser from then on. <laughs> Point is, it took me a while to ever get back in front of the class and have courage to speak in front of my classmates. Second story. Second story is very, very different, very different ending. Some of you might know it because Malcolm Gladwell actually covered it in his book, Outliers. And it's about one of the mo most beloved music groups, the Beatles. The story goes that the Beatles, when they were still in high school, just music wannabes, before they found any success in America, they were thrust into a pressure-filled situation. They had accepted an invitation to go play for an extended amount of time, months, at a place in Hamburg, Germany, which we'll describe, for lack of a better term, a strip club. <laughs> now the pressure was on. Because of the environment and the atmosphere of the club, they had to play for eight to 10 hours straight, almost nonstop. And these are kids that barely even had their own material. So now they had to learn new cover songs. They had to learn how to improvise on stage while they were playing and they even had to venture into other genres like jazz. But they persevered. They reminded themselves that we're in Hamburg, Germany. We're far from home. A failure here will not be known to anybody in England back home. And they found ways to make the situation fun for them because a lot of things were going on around them in this environment while they were playing. They made it fun. So to demonstrate the difference between these two stories that I tell you, I'm going to draw a quick diagram, very simple. Now in this diagram, the center, the innermost circle, is what I call the comfort zone. 
And this diagram was developed by Professor Tichy from University of Michigan. The comfort zone, you're relaxed, you have almost no pressure on you, but you're bored most of the time and you're not using your abilities. Now, if we jump all the way to the extreme side of it, the outermost circle is the panic zone. <laughs> yes. This is where we're, we've overextended our abilities. We're too far from our skills and from what we know of, usually. And we're not able to be productive because a failure here means practically the world, the end of the world for us. This is where I was in fifth grade when I was giving that speech. Now in the middle zone, this is where you want to be. This is the learning zone. This is where the Beatles were. Yes, they were out of their comfort zone. They had to learn very new skills and impl implement them. But at the same time, they were able to make it fun. And they knew that complete failure wouldn't mean the end of them. So I impart on you these two simple tips to deal with pressure. First, quantify the worst case scenario. A lot of times you're panicking for no reason. It makes a difference. And step two, if you're still dealing with panicking, find a way to make it fun, like the Beatles did. Turn it into a game if you have to. It'll make all the difference in the world. So remember, pressure is a great motivator for growth. You should seek to stay out of the panic zone, like for example, walking across a plank 30 stories ahead of you. <laughs> but you should aim and urge and seek to stay within the learning zone, outside of your comfort zone. This is where growth occurs, this is where progress occurs, and most importantly, this is where revolutionary innovation occurs. Thank you. <laughs>